Environment is important to our lives. It either helps or hinders, builds or breaks. In its description, environment is circumstances, conditions that surround and act upon an individual or community, ultimately determining its miasmic or systemic factors resulting in either thriving, striving, struggling, or cessation. What if your environment was smack in between two deeply divided racial polarities, embellished with covert and blatant actions or inactions? An environment dictated by perceptions from rewritten history, Confederate culture, and systemic initiatives, leading to laws that were designed to cease or resist the civil advancement for full equal citizenship for people of color a racially toxic and stressful environment, deeply divided along political polarities. My name is Stephanie A. Smith, and that was my environment. My story started in Birmingham, Alabama, early 80s, where bias and stereotypical beliefs were still lingering. Jim Crow laws left indignation and hatefulness, governing minds and access, and danger lingering in spaces in public and also private interpersonal interactions. Okay, now, I need you to be a big girl today. My mother speaks to me. It's hot, the air is thick, and the heat is scorching. It's glistening, Alabama sun is beaming. I'm walking beside my mother, my hand is being squeezed, bring me back into the present. Do you hear me, young lady? Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Then suddenly, <gasps> her pace begins to thicken. My little feet slightly skip as occasionally one foot drags as she quickly walks and then she stops, dragging me behind her. I hear the engine slowly idling behind us, its pace exactly alongside us. Do you need a ride? I feel my body being jerked. Now I'm behind my mother and all I can see is the pleat of her white shorts. No, 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 thank you. We're okay. I wasn't gonna give you a ride anyway, you fucking nigger lover. Simultaneously, he throws some liquid. They go to peel it off, recklessly away from me. Look at me, look at me, panicked. My mother's looking at me, jerking me from behind her in front of her. Let me see your face. She wipes my face, quickly inspecting me. Oh, thank God, thank God, thank God, she's screaming as she's wiping away my tears and I'm just jolted. You see, her prayers were answered as that liquid was only beer and not the acid she feared. It could have been. You see, in Alabama, anti-miscegenation laws were actively held and enacted up until the year 2000. Although Virginia versus Loving was repealed in other states by 1967. No, really, 2000, the year I was graduating high school. That said, why were we walking? Well, you know, after the divorce, my mother was on her own and unfortunately we were kicked out of yet another apartment because I was living proof of miscegenation. Neighbors were disapproving of a person of color living in their neighborhood. A white woman and a black man, an ultimate no-no. And marrying, dare I say it, having a child in that place and time was the ultimate scarlet letter. And boy, did their stares and glares and grimaces show their disapproval. Me, by birth, a broken law. So now I'm a little bit older, roughly second grade age, home and in the bath, you see, I'm profusely just scrubbing, angrily, scrubbing at my arm, 
feeling successful. Oh my goodness, I can see a little bit of the white meat. And then, yes, okay, it's almost clean. And then I can see it stings and turns red and begins to bleed. Oh my God, what are you doing? My mother yells as she had just at that same time peeked into the door. As she runs in to further inspect some more, her voice startling me and I don't stop as I'm still scrubbing. I, I'm just trying to get the dirt off. The, uh, they said I was dirty and, and I just can't get the dirt off. Mommy, I'm just trying to get the dirt off. My mother instantly begins to cry and kneels beside me. No, baby, you're clean as she takes the cloth from my hand. Now you see Alabama law and policies and practices and procedures upheld place and spaces where one half of my blood I was entirely unprotected by law or custom and considered to be property or undeserving dirt, dirty and subhuman. And the other half, my white half, engulfed me with culture and images that were happy, smiling, it's a wonderful life and everything that was not me. This environment left me grasping for an understanding as the racial tension that uncertainty, that intolerance that continued to build around me, around us, affecting my family altogether, altogether separate, but yet very, very different ways. You see, living between two cultures separated by laws, stereotypes, oppression, and yet constantly given a gaze to perform to perform to a drastic perceptual differences. It's different. You see, this time I was home in Christmas. The lights are twinkling in my room. I'm surrounded by my strawberry shortcake themed room playing with my dolls and my tea set and my crayons all at the same time. I was a multitasker back then, even way back then. But I'm listening hard as I've learned to be very vigilant at any moment things could change and did change. Damn it, not again. I can hear my mother in the other room. I listen harder. These fucking people, what? Whoa, what are we gonna do for food? I'm not sure who or how they found out. Yeah. Well, you know, once they said Stephanie's name, I told them to go to hell. I didn't want the fucking job anyways, and I walked out. I heard my name. At 10 a.m., I quickly scuttled over to the corner to get a better look. I stare at my mother as she's speaking into the phone, frustrated and crying. Well, fuck them. This is my daughter. But damn it, we just got this apartment now fired again. Yeah, I'll, I'll get a paper tomorrow and look. Hmm? What about me? What did I do? Whatever it was, I hope I don't do it again. And it was then I start to correlate my presence in the occurrence of these issues, the stares, the glares, the problems. Growing up as in this white culture in these tense times or inevitable as... The environment I grew up was riddled with pockets of hidden dangers without warning, making it living between two colliding cultures extremely difficult without understanding. You see, when I stepped into the world, I was unprepared, unprotected from its polarities, the clash and even how to respond, especially as I constantly unknowingly stepped onto the landmine of covert and even overt racism. Fast forward 10 years in Daphne, Daphne, Alabama, a new city and a new start, a new environment. However, a few days quickly, I noticed the dangers. My surroundings changed from a bustling city of Birmingham to backwoods, large cotton fields. Southern Annabelle culture. 
This environment was, was even accompanied by big, large columned houses and the wraparound porches and even bigger weeping willow trees that you know formerly adorned the strange fruit that Billie Holiday sang of. And there was this thick feeling everywhere you went. It was felt, no one actually spoke of it, but this difference was so prevalent. It was awesome, treed, just hush hush. This thick feeling of you don't belong here. Now, in middle school in Daphne High, the wealthy area of a 5A football school, Southern Bell Jubilee City, self-described as an active, family-oriented, community-blessed, with beautiful scenery, rich history, and a strong quality of life. Hmm. Quality of life. quality of life, my science teacher felt it was important to yell to everyone every day that my grade in her class was an F through the guise of saying my name. Stephanie with an F in my class, come up here. And all the class would snicker right behind her. You see scenarios like these repeated many times. Some's like the classroom or some even worse, like crosses being burnt in our yard or backhanded comments and racist microaggressions, breeding disdain, hate, and confusion, causing a rift in the peace that all humans deserve. At 22, I boarded a Greyhound and I left Alabama for good, swearing never to return during the journey, I felt an indescribable urethra as the bus went from state to state further away from the southern Alabama South. You know, after some years, I didn't realize that I didn't have a terminology what to speak of what that thick feeling miasmic was. I didn't know I had the power to stand up against situations like these. Over time in this new environment, my whole world turned upside down to land right side up. In a divine intervention, I reunited with my father and his side of the family. I did the work and I took the time to not only find my identity in my African-American culture, but also search for the truth instead of just listening to what was surrounding rhetoric. I had to unlearn the products of my racist Alabama environment, especially the tenets of meritocracy and bootstrapping concepts I was told to aspire for. Work hard, keep your nose clean and keep your head down without question. But I wasn't whole until I asked those questions, until I spoke up for myself and was taken under the wing of different supportive family members, African-American circles. It wasn't until I reflected and I saw a mirror of myself. And when I received my black experience negating all of the hateful, double-edged, biting culture that I found in my childhood years. Achieving stability and equal access to the same value and human decency and mentally stability is linked in our environments. Our environments are made due to our social policies, practices, and beliefs that we make, we uphold in our conscious and unconscious beliefs. So I close you with this one question. Look at your practices, look at your thoughts, beliefs, and, and what kind of environment are you practicing and making? Thank you.